is New Center 6 tonight. Good evening. A Mercer County man could spend the next 15 years in prison. The charges are manslaughter and violation of probation. 22-year-old Barry Dale White. A federal judge today agreed to take the Summers County Jail out of receivership and let county officials take back the facility. A spokesman for Judge Elizabeth Hallinan says the county's meeting most requirements set up by an earlier order. Hallinan says the receiver will be reinstated, stated though, if necessary. Controversy in Summers County over the future school colors of Hinton High School may be resolved soon. The Board of Education has now voted to allow students who will be attending the new high school to vote on the new school colors. This year's juniors and seniors will not be allowed to vote since they will have already graduated by the time the school opens in the fall of 1994. The colors, orange and black, or any other combinations of colors used by past high schools in Summers County will not be approved. On the eve of the president-elect Bill Clinton's inauguration, Iraq announced a ceasefire in the no-fly zones in the northern and southern portions of the country. Iraqi officials called it a goodwill gesture to the incoming president. The move allowed follows, rather, another U.S. attack on missile sites this morning. Sandy Gilmore reports. The VMI case is back in court. Today, the Military Institute asked the Supreme Court to decide whether its all-male admissions policy is unconstitutional. The state-supported school wants the Supreme Court to overturn a federal appeals court ruling that VMI may not continue the policy as long as the state fails to provide an identical program for women. VMI's petition says if the earlier ruling is allowed to stand, co-education will be viewed as a constitutional requirement. Every crime short A new study says West Virginia may not be so destitute after all when it comes to how healthy we are. We ranked 41st instead of our usual 50 for overall healthiness. But as Jolita Albright reports, some are skeptical about the new numbers. Hinton's financial future should be improving. Several businesses plan on moving into the area, bringing some badly needed jobs along with them. Here's Teresa Hamilton with more. If those grocery bills make you angry, we'll find out how you can save money in some cases without sparing taste. That coming up a little later on. Next up, a look at weather. Woke up this morning to a nice dusting of snow, but yeah. what's in store for tomorrow? Well, <laughs> I don't think we're going to give you any snow tomorrow, folks. It's going to be a nice day. Good. That's yeah, good. So it's, I mean, it's a decent day for this time of the year, I think. All right, let's take a look and I'll let you into that in just a few seconds. Let's take a look and see what happened at the Mercer County Airport today. Normal. Our normal temperature extremes for this time of year, 38 for the high, 22 for the low. I thought you were going to let us guess. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have guessed. Shoot. You were going to guess that I anyhow. thought this was Jeopardy or something. You were going to guess anyhow. <laughs> hey. right? Plain old rain and no snow. snow. That's right. right. Well, thanks, Dan. Thanks a lot. Well, just ahead in sports highlights from tonight's Princeton Mountain View shootout at the Tigers' Den in Princeton. And in college hoops, Bluefield College and King College from the Dome in Bluefield. Woody? And we'll tell you who was crowned tonight, but first, let's go to the world of the NBA. And of course, I'm definitely a woman, not that there was any oh, doubt. <laughs> but you're just talking about losing the weight from the holidays. And then there's Super Bowl, Super Bowl Sunday, when everybody chows down and sits in front of the TV and watches football. Now, the guys look at it as the sporting event. I look at of it course. as a way to ruin that diet. <laughs> well, you know, there's, there's three good days in, in America these days, Thanksgiving, Christmas Day, and, of course, Super Bowl, which is going so. to be right here on Channel 6 That's on January right. 31st. Yeah. And the prez has spoken. You know, folks, you got to remember, Florida Atlantic is not the biggest team or the best team in the land. But a win is a win is a win is a win, mm, as the coaches good. say. Yeah. Some pretty good action out there tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Woody. You bet. And we'll be right back. If the recession has tempted you to buy generic store brand rather than a name brand, you're not alone. But if you're like most shoppers, you're probably wondering if those store brands are any good. Steve Gendel has some tips on answering that question. Hmm. There are a lot of those uh, generic brands and uh, off-brands, too, are also... Uh, very good, especially on, on some things. Yeah, it's really bad things, when actually. you uh, open up a can of the off-brand green beans and pick out like a grasshopper or something. That always kind of turns Oh, there was that has nice never track. happened to me, no. Lorraine. Me neither. Nice I was <laughs> just, just kidding, you guys. That's the news. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Good night. Trouble continues at this hour at the Keene Mountain Correctional Center in Buchanan County, Virginia. A standoff between guards and inmates is entering its eighth hour tonight. The standoff at the Keene Mountain Correctional Center started just after three this afternoon. Prison officials say they were moving some inmates to the gym using tighter security measures when several inmates became angry. 
David Soldado was one of seven prison workers injured in the scuffle. Uh, basically punched in the face and then on the ground, and, and then, uh, then they pulled me in the support building. The inmates are located in a recreation yard near the center of the facility. There are currently about 200 there now, protesting new, tighter security measures at the prison, refusing to go to their cells. Just outside the maximum security prison are 200 guards and state police officers prepared to use maximum force, including tear gas and batons. Very hopefully right now the inmates will go back into their pods and uh, nothing will take place. However, uh, we're going to respond according to the way the inmates respond and if necessary and we need to go in to move them into the buildings, we'll do that and hopefully they'll go in on their own. Travers says some of the inmates are believed to be armed with pieces of broken park benches, broom handles, and possibly weightlifting equipment. Today's uprising is the largest at the prison so far. Never been anything like this before. Uh, a lot of the correctional officers that are here, as well as the state police, are experienced in this type of uh, activity. And right now, I'd say uh, it's a somber mood. Uh, there's uh, some tension, but uh, I don't think there's any panic whatsoever. Prison officials say they're hoping to wait the problem out, but say they may give the inmates an ultimatum. If it's not met, these guards on standby will be called to action. The rest of the prison is under a lockdown tonight. Once the protesting inmates are brought in, no inmates will be allowed out of their cells until an investigation into the matter is complete. And those responsible for the uprising could be looking at even longer prison sentences. West Virginia Governor Gaston Caperton tonight proposed a five cent a gallon increase in the gasoline tax. That's one of several plans Caperton put forth in his State of the State address in Charleston tonight. He says the gas tax would raise $50 million. Caperton also proposed a 1% tax increase for people who make $100,000 a year or more. And he's planning to reduce the state staff size by 10% over three years, with the exception of state police and the Division of Corrections. We have clear goals, and the compassion, courage, and determination to build a better West Virginia. This is our mission in the next 60 days, and I am confident that we will be successful. God bless you, and thank you very much. Caperton is also calling for a $1,000 pay raise for state employees and school service personnel. In addition, the governor proposes closing several business tax loopholes to raise nearly $67 million in new revenues. While Democrats praised the governor's speech, Republicans were critical. Senate Republican leader Donna Boley called Caperton's speech long on rhetoric and short on specifics. Another blast came from a coal official who says a proposal to increase the coal severance tax from 50 cents a ton to $1.25 a ton would be devastating to the industry. Bill Rainey, president of the West Virginia Coal Association, says it would kick West Virginia coal producers out of all the competitive markets in the world. Earlier today, the state legislature convened for the 71st time. Members got right down to business. In fact, in the House, there were more than 100 bills introduced, among them lowering the legal limit on intoxicated drivers, a proposal to kill the video lottery, a bill that would do away with the tolls on interstates for West Virginia citizens, and a bill that would require marriage license applications to carry a warning that spousal abuse is punishable by law. Special interest groups wasted no time trying to grab the ears and the sympathies of legislators. Members of the state employees union say they're going to do whatever they have to to get collective bargaining. Hey, for the last few years, we've been down here every year. We've done it the polite way, the nice way, the quiet way. We've never gotten in anybody's face or created a ruckus where we embarrassed anybody or anything like that. Well, this year, it's, we're going to make ourselves known, whatever it takes. While state workers say it's time for collective bargaining, another group is saying it's time to stand up for fathers' rights. This group protested the way divorced fathers or remarried fathers are treated by the lawmaster system. Uh, this is um, the fathers that want to pay their child support, but at a reasonable rate where they will not end up homeless. Um, the second wives and their children are suffering from this and the National Organization for Women had a lobbyist trying to push for guaranteed abortion rights and an amendment to the state constitution's human rights law so that homosexuals are guaranteed protection from discrimination and hate crimes. 
And now look at our first forecast with Stan Sweet. How's it shaping up over there, Stan? Well, those clear skies out there right now are letting those temperatures drop like a lead balloon. Let's take a look at the next 18 hours and show you what we expect here. Mostly clear early here like it is now. Well, after midnight, we'll be cloudy, low expected, 35 to 40 for most of us, and 25 to 30 in those colder valleys, and almost calm the wind department there. And then tomorrow, cloudy with a 50% chance of light rain late, and then a high expected 45 to 50 degrees. That elusive chance of snow has changed its position in our forecast, ladies and gentlemen, you'll see in a few minutes. And coming up, a judge refuses to let a Beckley man out of jail. The man's accused of killing his four-month-old son. Details next. The facts and take control. Fact. J.D. Power & Associates, the authoritative automotive research company, has named Chevrolet as the best full-size pickup. Fact. Chevy trucks outsell all its competitors in southern West Virginia thanks to quality conscious consumers. Fact. Chevy is first when you want your truck to last. Of all the Chevy trucks built in the last 10 years, over 98% are still going strong. Fact. Your United Chevy dealers want you to know the cold, hard facts. The high cost of health care? Everyone has a part in keeping it down. So we took what you like about Walmart and what you want in a pharmacy and put it right inside your Walmart store. The result? Walmart's pharmacy department. With professional service and a low price on every prescription. So next time, bring it here. Or ask your doctor to call. Walmart's pharmacy department. Your full service pharmacy. Right inside Walmart. Always the low price. Always. On the next Whoopi, Peanuts creator Charles Schultz. Generations of us are Peanuts kids. Charlie Brown's a nice kid. He's the sort of kid that I would have liked to have had for a neighbor when I was a boy because he likes all of the things that I like. People have to worry, uh, is poor Charlie Brown going to have the football pulled away from him again, you know? <laughs> My strip is very close to life. It's the next Whoopi. Tomorrow at noon on WVVA Television 6. A Bluefield, Virginia man tonight is charged in connection with the death of his stepfather. Authorities say 22-year-old Patrick Allen Farmer was indicted by a grand jury today and arrested for the murder of 35-year-old Flem Hicks of Bluefield, Virginia. The shotgun killing took place November 22nd of last year. Farmer says he shot his stepfather in self-defense over an argument between Hicks and the victim's wife. Farmer is in the Tazewell County Jail tonight and is being held without bond. A court appearance is set for March 1st. A Raleigh County judge today denied bond for a young man accused of beating his infant son to death. Vincent Wolf of Beckley is charged with killing his four-month-old son by hitting him repeatedly when he wouldn't stop crying. At first, Wolf told authorities the child was choking and he hit him to try to dislodge whatever was choking him. But three days after the baby's death, Wolf admitted he tried to silence the crying child with blows to the head. Wolf will, re will remain in jail until a preliminary hearing sometime within the next two weeks. If you've watched a lot of TV tonight, chances are you saw a few people die. According to the National Coalition on TV Violence, a murder takes place once every 78 minutes during prime time. That's compared to a killing once every 107 minutes last year. The coalition accused Fox TV of being the most violent broadcast network, but for the most violent show, the group singles out ABC's The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, which averages 60 violent acts per hour. The UMW strike against Peabody Coal is well into its second week, and Rich Trumka is now hunting for stronger support. The UMW president says he plans to meet with other labor leaders on Monday, hoping to build active support within the labor movement for the strike. Trumka says, quote, it's our experience that union solidarity is a powerful tool for winning strikes. President Clinton is looking for a new mine safety chief, and three of the candidates are West Virginians. Sources say those recommended for the job of Assistant Secretary of Labor for Mine Safety and Health include Steve Weber, David McAteer, and Chris Hamilton. Weber is currently director of the State Office of Mine Health and Safety Training. McAteer is head of a labor-oriented law firm, and Hamilton is the vice president of the West Virginia Coal Association. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Jay Leno, and it sweeps, and you know what that means. Nude women, hunky guys, car crashes, bizarre cults, and that's just on the nightly news. Listen, why not take a break from all the hype and watch us on The Tonight Show right here. With Tom Jones and Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Then stay tuned for Late Night with Timothy Hutton and Bonnie Hunt, all tonight. I carry in my mind the picture of a child who was never born. 
a child I aborted. A picture that changes as the years go by. I imagine him growing tall with dark hair and eyes. Again and again, my mind returns to that ghost of a child who would have been 12 this spring. If you think abortion is an easy choice, that you can just forget about it, it's not true. You can't. See your world through Sally's eyes. Get a different point of view. Cheapers, creepers, Sally's beepers show an awful lot to you. Maybe it's a tender moment or a big surprise. She put you wise. Put that pair of glasses on and see your world through Sally's eyes. Sally Jesse Raphael, tomorrow at 9. This is Pete. Many children like Pete will die in fires this year. Smoke detectors save lives. Install one. Check the battery. For Pete's sake. Monday through Friday, Shoney's Breakfast Bar is only $2.99. It's for a limited time, so you better hurry. You should dress first. How many bowls of this cereal would it take to equal the nutritional value of the fresh fruit, eggs, grits, and bacon on Shoney's Breakfast Bar? Well, it depends on how big your bowl is. President Clinton pressed on his apparent backpedaling on a middle-class tax break, says the country's economic problems mean Somebody sacrifices will have to be broad-based. During a televised town hall meeting in Southfield, Michigan, a woman who said she voted for Clinton partly because he supported a middle-class tax cut expressed concern that his administration now seems to be backing away from that stance. Clinton has answered that, while he has always favored the idea of such a cut, he never promised it would be possible. And Clinton says now, in the face of a worse-than-predicted deficit, it wouldn't be right to exempt any group of people from making sacrifices. One thing you don't want to sacrifice on a job interview is how much time you put into preparing for it. That's right. Even if your resume appears to be in good shape, it's still easy to botch the final test. The job interview is the focus tonight of our continuing series, Job Quest. Today's Job Quest takes us to the campus of Bluefield College, where students are learning techniques of acing job interviews. That's something people in all walks of life may be able to improve on. In only a matter of minutes, the Director of Career Development, Jackie Oblinger, was able to get across several helpful hints that could make a big difference when it comes to the all-important job interview. Being prepared and coming across as a hard worker topped the list. You need to prepare the questions, the answers to the questions. You need to know some of the, the questions that employers are going to ask, such as, you know, typical leading questions or tell me about yourself. You need to practice doing that. Do it in front of a mirror. Uh, if they say to you, why do you want to work for the company? Well, how do you answer that? You answer it properly because you research it. Oblinger says you also need to practice simple things such as walking into the interview, sitting down, and giving a good firm handshake. And then you, um, I think you also have to put together a wardrobe. When you walk through the door in that just first few instants, they can say, gee, they came on business, and they're serious about this. And how do you do that? Well, you just make sure it's clean, neat, traditional. Cleanliness and a show of enthusiasm for the company will also score points. And Oblinger says every point is important, especially in this area, where every job opening receives up to 150 applicants, of which up to 75% of those people are very qualified for the position. For those who are able to find jobs, the next trick is keeping it. That's what we'll take a look at tomorrow on JobQuest. Well, a Tazewell County man who makes his living bagging groceries is named the third best bagger in the nation. John Chanel returned home today from the national competition in San Francisco. He brought home a trophy and a $100 prize for his effort. Although he was a little disappointed, he shouldn't be. He was the fastest bagger at the competition, but was beaten out in a couple of other categories. The winner hails from Nebraska. John says he'll take another crack at it next year. Good luck. Yeah. And congratulations to him. The well, weather's next. Stan will be here to tell us what the rest of the week will look like. And later on, man's best friend takes the spotlight in the Big Apple. Stay tuned.
Some big out-of-town companies make great promises to get your individual retirement account. Then they may add on annual maintenance fees, transfer fees, and other unexpected fees. Suddenly, that IRA doesn't seem all it was cracked up to be. Not at the Flat Top National Bank of Bluefield. We'll help you build a solid nest egg on a firm foundation with consistent growth, no service fees, and FDIC insurance. Come over to Flat Top today. We'll help you weather the storm. to life's richest puzzles. Tomorrow night at 7. This is Jeopardy! Exercise for the mind. Counties for 100. Answer. Pope, Pulaski, Peoria. What is Illinois? Television 500. There is the Daily Double. Time now for Double Jeopardy. For 200, please. Miss Cleopatra. You've just broken the tie. World geography. Be more specific. This is the Danube. Listen, play rest. The other Daily Double. For 800. For 1,000. This is the correct. Final Jeopardy. Seen any exciting television lately? Take the Jeopardy Challenge. Jeopardy tomorrow at 7.30. And hot. Nobody serves up the taste that Long John's has got. You're gonna get your wings. Go, 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 fish. go for one of our three great value meals, each just $1.99, and add a piece. Still a nice night out there tonight, but how much longer will it last? Well, uh, Sherry asked me today how long this nice weather has been. It's been over two weeks. I had to look back in the files. Mm -hmm. Over weeks. two weeks. Very little change in the weather. Time running nice. out, though? It's running out, folks. <laughs> Still looks nice out there. Let's take a look and see what the almanac looks like, and we'll get right at it. Uh, you mean you don't deliver these things? With a kiss? <laughs> yeah. I sent a note in with a post. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Well, just ahead in sports, VMI and Virginia Tech from the Castle in Blacksburg. And West Virginia Conference Action from Bluefield State. Winning? That's exactly right, but no chocolates. But we will have the rest of the day in sports, plus NASCAR action. But first, let's go to the top 25 in the NBA. We'll be back right after we take this time out. Don't go away. Well, at least one NASCAR driver out there has a big seat to fill. I know mm -hmm. that. <laughs> you know, he does have a big seat to fill. We're talking about Rick Wilson. But, you know, the play in Daytona is that they're playing it down. Is that enough? Really? And, and there are great expectations, but, you know, there's not an overwhelming uh, pressure for him to win. Yeah. But you know he must. Yeah. He's going to stick around. But, folks, you know, well tonight against the key dance. He's yeah. got quite a future there. He certainly does. At least three more years. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, just a few more days before Going you guys... Going out on a limb. Before you guys right. uh, play your big basketball game. That's right. right? We want to invite everybody to the... Uh, Bluefield High School Gymnasium okay. on Sunday at 3 o'clock. It'll be the first annual edition of the Valentine's Day Basketball Massacre. And we will go out and we will beat the uh, Bluefield High School coaches. Mark Brown said he's going to get at least 30 points. So. And you'll see red. <laughs> yeah, blood from the beating I'm going to take, that's for sure. Well, we'll be there. We'll, re we'll cheer you. Thank Stay you. right there. We'll be right back. A dog's life isn't all bad, especially for those extremely well-groomed pets that we see from time to time in the spotlight. The Westminster Kennel Club in New York is holding its annual dog show. Hal Roker takes a look at some of the contestants. Say hi, Bert. Ever wonder why some dogs seem just like their human masters? Some dogs are happy, others quick to fly off the handle. They say it takes all kinds, the skinny, the fat, the short, and the tall. Here at the 117th Annual Westminster Dog Show, they've got them all. It's a corded coat. They form when they're about 10 months old, and then they just get longer as they get older. There's Jill the Papillon and Dawn the Afghan. Murphy the Cocker, and of course, Bentley the Bloodhound. Can you say something, huh? Say something. Oh, there goes Gorby the Pug. <laughs> we also ran into these three Maltese, all dressed up and ready to party. This is... Uh... Champion Lawnmower Miami Dandy. They call him Dandy, and of course, he's from Miami. <laughs> and this huge Great Dane, all big and hearty. Give her a little food. But then there are the wallflowers with hats and tresses. 
and little bold ones without their dresses. And I just threw this shot in of this woman hitting the rug. Don't worry, she wasn't hurt, but the dogs kind of enjoyed it. But it's not all work for these champions. Nothing wrong with a little hugging, kissing, and sniffing. Hmm. Dogs will be dogs, I suppose. I guess so. Stan, what are you doing over there? I'm looking at the observer <laughs> that comes out tomorrow. He's just oh. bragging over there. <laughs> I got my picture in there. <laughs> we'll have to what? look at that tomorrow. Yeah. What, what's the article? 40, are you going to save that for tomorrow? I, I'm not going to. I hate to tell you what the article is. I, it was embarrassing the other day when they had told me about it. But, Today, uh, the observer. Tomorrow, the New York Times. It, it was, we'll uh, save it. I, I won the best looking man uh, award. And Kevin. And he has the best vision of Barrett. anybody here. <laughs> we have to go, though. We'll see Good you later. Night. You have been watching News Center 6, the region's most watched newscast. Iris Gill got more than she bargained for when she bought a $3 container of Food Lion cooking oil. The second time I took it back out to use it, it was worse. So you looked inside? Yeah. And that's when you saw? The mouse. The oil is in a frosted bottle, making the mouse difficult to see with the camera, but there's no denying it's there. Gill also denies putting the mouse in the oil, as one Food Lion official hinted. Gill purchased the oil at a nearby Food Lion store in Parisburg, Virginia. She immediately called Food Lion headquarters in Salisbury, North Carolina. But in spite of the Food Lion label on the oil, she says the company denied responsibility and referred her to the product's manufacturer, C.F. Sauer. That company offered to reimburse her for the oil and give her another bottle for free, but Gill refused. And today, an official with the Sour Company made a personal visit to Gill's home, offering her $50 and a free gift pack in exchange for the oil and her trouble. She refused, and he upped his offer to $100, but Gill wants more, and she's meeting with her attorney tomorrow. Um, I want everybody to know about it, so that nobody else, so that the next time they sell their oil, it'll be clean. Gill says CF Sour blames Food Lion, Food Lion blames Sour. Gill blames both. What do you think about Food Lion now? I mean, I'll never go back. And if I can find anything that's going to tell me what uh, CF Sour manufactures, I'll never buy any of their products either. Loretta Budd for NBC News. Center 6, tonight. Good evening. President Clinton has asked the American people to act now on the deficit, or he says we won't recognize the country 10 years from now. In a speech to both houses of Congress, Clinton proposed a mixture of tax increases and spending cuts. That, he says, will cut $140 billion from the deficit by 1997. Republicans are denouncing Clinton's plan as one more round of tax and spend philosophy. Sandy Gilmore now joins us live from Washington with the very latest. State employees in West Virginia will get a cha change in the way they're paid. Today, the state auditor announced that state workers will get direct deposit on payday very soon. Uh, there's no check. Uh, there's no mailing. It goes directly to their bank account. They have it the day that payday arrives. The money is going to be in their account available for their use. The plan will be phased in over the next 18 months. Time now for a quick check on the weather. And word is it could get even colder out there tonight, Stan. It's promising to get a lot colder out there. Now, the forecast that's coming in just a few minutes. There's been a lot of talk about a national health care package these days. But what will it take to put one together? We'll find out later in the news. More controversy tonight for Appalachian Power Company's proposed high-voltage power line. A citizen's group known as Common Ground has filed a complaint against APCO with the Public Service Commission. The group is asking the PSC to determine whether APCO is using customer money to launch a media campaign endorsing its planned high-voltage power line. APCO just last week announced the formation of a coalition to promote its power line. The organization is called Coalition for Energy and Economic Revitalization, or SEER. The 765-kilovolt line would link Wyoming County to its Cloverdale station near Roanoke. The UMW strike, is, and that's apparently why talks broke off. Unemployment in West Virginia will be the focus of a hearing in Washington tomorrow. The State Bureau of Employment Programs Commissioner is slated to testify before a congressional committee on the loss of funding for state unemployment offices. Andrew Richardson will speak in support of extending emergency unemployment compensation benefits as proposed by President Clinton. Richardson says West Virginia, which leads the nation in unemployment, has 19 job service offices down from 45 in 1981. 
State officials are trying to increase the number of jobs in West Virginia. And one organization that helps lure those jobs in West Virginia is the State Development Office. Here's Jaleed Albright with tonight's segment of JobQuest. In Charleston, Jaleed Albright, New Center 6. And tomorrow night, we'll talk to people at unemployment offices who are looking for work and finding dead ends. The recently criticized Burg, North Carolina, are the only ones to have installed the windows. 300 Radford Arsenal workers could be out of a job by week's end thanks to yesterday's explosion. A blast at the company's nitroglycerin storehouse didn't hurt anyone, but it caused extensive damage to the building. Company officials say the 300 workers will be given furloughs indefinitely because of the explosion. There's still no word on what caused yesterday's accident. Another health study in the Mountain State and more bad news. The study by the State Bureau of Public Health and the Federal Centers for Disease Control is based on data collected during 1991. The report shows West Virginians rank high in obesity and the use of smokeless tobacco. On the bright side, it shows state residents are working to ensure better health. Former First Lady Barbara Bush was... The former First Lady, however, did tell reporters that the couple would not be watching Clinton's televised speech tonight. Well, it's no vacation for our Stan Suite. We'll find out how that extended forecast is shaping up. And later on, it takes a lot of horsepower to pull this draft horse out of a sticky situation. It's a story you won't want to miss. It's still mighty cold out there, but still warm enough to snow, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no, uh, no hiding out from the snow situation. I thought if it got a certain temperature, it wouldn't snow. If it got so cold, it just can't snow. It's a complicated system. It depends on whether it's upper air, lower air, and all the other things. So well, maybe we can bone up on that tomorrow. Bone up on that tomorrow. Anyhow, we have flurries coming down right here in Bluefield now and a lot of other places. All right, let's take a look at the Almanac and show you what happened at the Mercer County Airport today. Would you believe the temperature swings? 25 up to 55 degrees, a 30 degree difference in just three days. I think it's kind of weird to give I do too. Kind of we might get stretch marks from that. Strong, <laughs> just right, stretch marks. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Dan. Well, Woody's up next with basketball highlights from Concord College. And uh, both the men and women from Bluefield State are in action tonight, Woody. Uh, they certainly are. We'll have highlights of that, all that coming up and more, but we'll do this first, right after this timeout. We'll be back. Good news for all the local teams tonight. How did uh, West Virginia Mountaineers do? Well, for the West Virginia Mountaineer fans, take heart. For the Marshall fans, there's always next year, Barrett. Tonight in Charleston, the West Virginia Mountaineers battled the thundering herd. Concord College Lady Lions on tap first. And, of course, the champion, Con uh, West Virginia State champion, uh, Bluefield State Lady Blues, will open on Sunday. Great. They got off to a good start tonight. I mean, they're, oh, they're on the goodness. roll. Like oh, they really are. They, uh, they, like I said, 19 uh, and 0 in the conference this year. They look like mm. they may be making the trip to the NAIA tournament. Of course, they have to get past the tournament first. Yeah, yeah fantastic. I think it's pretty much a sure bet. Hope so anyway. Congratulations to all the local teams. That's Western right. State, Concord College. We'll be right back. Stay right there. There was a dramatic rescue of a horse caught in the mud after a torrential rainstorm turned a dry creek bed into a sea of mud. Bruce Hall reports on the saga of Benny the Horse. It was a bad day for Benny. Bruce Hall, NBC News. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's I a mean, great story. I have never seen anything like that. And the fact that it walked away is even more surprising. <laughs> you know, one time when I was a kid, me and my dad and uh, several other people had to pull a cow out of a frozen pond and fallen through the ice and it was getting ready to calve. And it's pretty amazing. It lived? Yeah, amazing. it sure did. Well, that's the news. Thanks for tuning in. Good night. You have been watching News Center 6, the region's most watched newscast. The standoff at the Keene Mountain Correctional Center started just after 3 this afternoon. Prison officials say they were moving some inmates to the gym using tighter security measures when several inmates became angry. David Soldado was one of seven prison workers injured in the scuffle. Uh, basically punched in the face and then on the ground and, and then, uh, then they pulled me in the support belt. The inmates are located in a recreation yard near the center of the facility. There are currently about 200 there now, protesting new, tighter security measures at the prison, refusing to go to their cells. Just outside the maximum security prison are 200 guards and state police officers prepared to use maximum force, including tear gas and batons. Very hopefully right now the inmates will go back into their pods and uh, nothing will take place. However, uh, 
we're going to respond according to the way the inmates respond. And if necessary and we need to go in to move them into the buildings, we'll do that. And hopefully they'll go in on their own. Travers says some of the inmates are believed to be armed with pieces of broken park benches, broom handles, and possibly weightlifting equipment. Today's uprising is the largest at the prison so far. Never been anything like this before. Uh, a lot of the correctional officers that are here, as well as the state police, are experienced in this type of uh, activity. And right now, I'd say uh, it's a somber mood. Uh, there's uh, some tension, but uh, I don't think there's any panic whatsoever. Prison officials say they're hoping to wait the problem out, but say they may give the inmates an ultimatum. If it's not met, these guards on standby will be called to action. This is News Center 6 at 6. Good evening. Sherry has the night off. It appears the company that pushed so hard for a McDowell County landfill is now pulling out. Loretta Capel's Resources has informed county officials it wants to sell their proposed landfill, and that has left a lot of people steaming. There's going to be 300 jobs to talk about Cable's plans. The UMW strikes now into its 17th day, and today, striking miners received their final pre-walkout paychecks. The UMW is working on taking up contributions, though, for strike assistance, and the two Peabody subsidiaries were busy shipping coal today. UMW officials say they won't try to disrupt the shipments of Eastern Associated Coal and Peabody Coal because the coal was mined by union workers in December and January, well before the strike. The West Virginia wondering where the lowest tax is, try Alaska at eight cents a gallon. Well, area residents are mulling over President Clinton's economic address to the nation last night, and today the reviews on his plans are mixed. Well, uh... And coming up next, After Hours. And here's Jolita Albright with a sneak preview. A road trip to Roanoke with a visit to a unique museum will be... You know, it can be awfully scary looking for work, especially when you're not sure how to go about it. And when you're not sure what prospective employers are looking for, it can make you that much more uneasy about the search for employment. New Center 6's Barrett Van continues our series, Job Quest. But it sounds like a good assignment for Job Quest. Stay tuned. In Mercer County, Barrett Van, New Center 6. That's right. Tomorrow on Job Quest, we'll put some experts on the hot seat to answer the questions posed in Barrett's story. And if you need some answers concerning your taxes, there's help available. Randy Alvis says that uh, low-income folks and uh, students are available and accessible to that program. The people pushing the pencils and doing the adding are Concord College students who are majoring in accounting. May have to give those guys a try here in the next few weeks. <laughs> there have been many celebrations of Black History Month across the region. But there is a place in Roanoke that honors black history all year long. That's right. Jaleed Albright takes us there in this week's edition of After Hours. Because racial and ethnic harmony sometimes seem a little out of tune. Well, if you're making weekend plans, Sunday may be a pretty decent day. That's right. It'll definitely seem balmy compared to today's temperatures. That's for sure. Stan? <laughs> yes, the snow's coming back soon, too. And tonight, it should be one of the very coldest of the season. We'll have more on that in just a moment. And because of the cold temperatures, and maybe just people want a little vacation, I don't know, but there are some things that are canceled tonight and tomorrow. A lot of schools were canceled today. PTO meeting at Athens Elementary is canceled tonight. Concord classes at Woodrow Wilson in Beckley are canceled, but the Mine Academy classes are still on tonight. And Buchanan County, Virginia schools will be canceled tomorrow. So get to sleep in a few extra hours. What was the deal, though? I mean, there was no snow to no. speak of. Just, it was cold. It was yeah. cold. That's about all I can say. In a lot of places, they had short hours or canceled or I something. I think some like places that. had well, heating cool. problems. That's that what, I, what I guessed on that before was that yeah. they had some breakdown in their heating system or something. That's right. All right. That's a speculation, folks. But the next one is forecast time <laughs> in just a second. But let's take a look at the almanac. And it should not be one of those who see sub-zero temperatures tonight, but it should be down there close enough to get your attention and your respect. Probably close enough to break the thermometer. Oh, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely Stand. cold out there. Thank you. Coming up next in sports, suspensions rock Virginia Tech. And Grundy readies for a run at a seventh straight state wrestling title. Would it? They are the top of the hit list, Kevin. Well, I guess when the hard court uh, happens tonight for the Hokies, hard court happens, Hoki Hokies <laughs> Going to be some changes on the uh, basketball team tonight, won't there? On a team that is filled full of freshmen, their two uh, most experienced players are uh, not going to be there. Hmm. That's right, folks. Two Virginia Tech high school basketball stars play until Sunday evening. And, of course, the men's tourney opens on Tuesday. We'll begin our coverage on Saturday night with Mark Brown. Be sure to join us. 
because as everybody knows, one loss in your history in this one. Oh, That's I right. know. Ugh. And Grundy, always good to see those oh, guys yes. down there doing so well. Woodrow Wilson, like we talked about that the other day, Woodrow right. Wilson showing quite well on the national scene. You know, I think that both in the two Virginias, we've got some great athletes and they're just now being recognized nationally. It's about time. I've been saying it since, <laughs> you know. Oh, Forever. That's right. Thanks, Woody. We'll, we'll go to the newsroom now where Barrett Van is standing by. Uh, what's coming up for the uh, late news, Barrett? A drug deal that went sour sends a Mercer County man to the hospital. He was shot earlier today. Also, the push for smoke free environments finds success on a Navy ship. Join us for News Center 6 tonight for these stories and much more. Loretta, Kevin? Thanks, Barrett. Do you know teen pregnancy is an issue we haven't heard a lot about lately? But we're going to hear more about it tonight. A Summers County group's been studying up on the subject. We'll find out what they have to say when we come back. A local task force will unveil its findings on teen pregnancy tonight. Members of a teen pregnancy task force in Summers County say one in six children in West Virginia is born to a teen parent. And they say part of the problem is that teens have few places to turn to for education and counseling. Well, what we've discovered is um, how widespread the problem of adolescent pregnancy is in Summers County of pregnancy. Included in task force recommendations are those for broader sex education programs, having female counselors on school staffs, and having child care facilities in high schools so teen parents can continue their education. Seems like it would make sense. Yeah. Yeah, so it does seem like it would make sense. That's it for all of us here at News Center 6. Thanks for watching tonight. Good night. You have been watching News Center 6, the region's most watched newscast. This is News Center 6 at 6. Good evening. Sherry's off tonight. It's the second charge in two weeks. A Fayette County man is behind bars for allegedly murdering his 19-month-old son. Police say 26-year-old Jeffrey LaRock of Springdale is charged with murdering 19-month-old Joshua. LaRock told officials at a local hospital the baby died Sunday after falling from a high chair, but later he reportedly confessed to dropping the child repeatedly on the head. LaRock was arraigned on first-degree murder charges and is awaiting uh, for a bond hearing. Authorities say they've removed his three-year-old daughter from the home just a few days ago. A Beckley man was arrested on those same charges. A Virginia transportation official says bad water drainage on Route 61 near Tazewell played a role in the accident that killed a young bland woman there Monday night. 18-year-old Rachel Marie Sparks died after a driver hit a patch of ice and slid into her car head-on. The ice formed on the road after temperatures dropped, freezing water that came from an overflowing drainage ditch. The Department of Transportation yesterday dug a 55-foot-long ditch and redirected it into the city drainage system. I definitely think this is this is going to prevent the, anything like this from happening again, and I definitely want to convey the uh, the Department of Transportation's uh, uh, sympathies to the families of the accident victims. Do you feel that the department is actually responsible? Uh, no, not at this point in time. No. Cochran says he hadn't received any complaints about ice or water at that spot before that accident. A Mercer County man will have to wait until next month for sentencing. 40-year-old John Church of Montcalm was in McDowell County Circuit Court today for sentencing for second-degree murder and unlawful assault. Church pleaded guilty in a murder in April of last year in which Dennis Farmer was shot outside an Anawalt bar he co-owned. But a mix-up by Church's attorney postponed today's scheduled sentencing. Our church also known as John Church. We appeared for sentencing in some of the... Uh family members of the victim were here for sentencing, but there was no pre-sentence report because the defense had failed to notify the probation office that he was applying for probation. Church's brother Pete faces similar charges and will be tried later on. Residents say a problem they've battled for several years in North Fork is surfacing again. As New Center 6's Glenn Willey reports, gasoline fumes are again forcing people from their homes. You don't have to be pumping gas in the McDowell County town of North Fork to smell gas fumes. Some residents are getting sick from the fumes, which are at their worst during heavy rain. Joe Hudson's wife left their home this morning after she was overcome by the fumes. She got the sick, she couldn't stay in the house. She got the sick, she just got vomit and puking, and, and she just got the sick, she couldn't hold her head up. Reverend Malcolm and her husband live in this house here, and they've installed this plastic pipe to help draw some of the gas fumes out of their basement, fumes which they say have become so intense that they've had to leave their home on several occasions. Last night, I have a bad cold, and I couldn't smell it, but my husband started getting sick to his stomach and having a headache uh, from the gas fumes, and 
Uh, we're very also concerned about our daughter, who is four. Mike Caparelli owns one of the gas stations in the area. He declined an on-camera interview, but did say, quote, there are several possible sources for the problem. I am using one tank that has been approved by the EPA, and the other four tanks are empty and have been empty for a year, end quote. Caparelli says he has complied with everything the Department of Natural Resources has asked for and will continue to do so. The West Virginia Division of the EPA came to North Fork this afternoon to once again try to pinpoint the source of the problem. There's a couple of uh, service stations that are in the area from talking with the local residents. There's also a, a number of abandoned underground storage tanks in the area too. Uh, so at this point we're trying to address uh, those sites as, as we find them. Martin says they have taken samples from the water supply and to this point the drinking water is safe. The EPA hopes further testing will locate the source of the leak and the problem can be corrected. In North Fork, Glenn Willie, New Center 6. Two dog owners in Tazewell County want to set the record straight. Yesterday on our broadcast they were accused by a couple of area residents of not taking proper care of their animals. Tonight a follow-up from New Center 6's Barrett Van. <laughs> Half-sisters Ruth Dye and Humane Society President Joan Canary say criticisms of how they take care of their animals is pure harassment. They say allegations that they don't provide adequate feed and water for their dogs are false. We come here at least once a day, every day, to feed and water. We have another member of the Humane Society that's an older gentleman and he's not able to get out and physically help, but he checks on the land for us during the day to make sure none of the dogs get out once in a while. Miss Canary and Miss Dye rented and lived on this property until a couple of months ago when the county took it over to make it part of the landfill. The two moved a few miles down the road to this piece of property they bought They've already moved about 10 of their dogs here, and they're planning to move the remaining 15 dogs in a matter of days. They say the fact that their operation is so spread out at this point is why the dog pens aren't as clean as they should be, another point of criticism. What's going to keep these dogs from having to live in the same conditions here as they are down there? Well, that's now the, the condition you're speaking about is the fact that we, when we live here, they're not, they're, those conditions don't exist. We go over there and clean those once a week. Once a week and put out new straw. But see, we're moving the animals, so maybe we don't get over there and clean as often as we should, but we do clean. Up here. Right, and we do keep these clean and put, like, right here, the fresh straw. But as soon as we get here and all the animals, then that's a daily thing. We clean each kennel a daily thing. Canary and Di say they don't want to turn any of the animals over to the county animal shelter for fear the dogs will be put to sleep. Yesterday, the county ordered the dogs off county property in 10 days. After that, county animal control officers could take possession. In Tazewell County, Barrett Van, New Center 6. And coming up, a lot of students struggle over what to do after high school. And tonight on JobQuest, we have some solutions whether you're career or college bound. Breakthroughs in technology have made it possible for automotive designers to create for the driver one of the safest environments ever. At Eagle, we've taken that technology and moved it a little to the right. Introducing vision from Eagle with standard drivers and passenger side airbags. See one today at your Jeep and Eagle dealer. See your West Virginia Jeep and Eagle dealer where you can expect the best. Are you disabled? Have you been injured? Are you unable to work? If so, you may be eligible for Social Security Disability Benefits. For more information, call Wolf and Farmer Attorneys at Law. We understand your problems and we can help. One of the best gifts I ever got from my daughter Jennifer was when she nominated me for West Virginia Mom of the Year. I'm Nancy Irvin, 1992 West Virginia Mom and representing my state in the national competition was a great honor for me. Nominate your mother by March 20th, 1993 for West Virginia Mom of the Year celebration. For additional information, telephone 1-800-CALL-WEST-VIRGINIA. He, he called Tuesday and uh, said he couldn't decide whether he should buy or rent. <laughs> <laughs> At Cold 
Chevrolet Cadillac Geo. Buy any new or used vehicle and receive a fabulous four-day, three-night vacation at the Myrtle Beach Hilton. We are Conversion Truck and Van Headquarters with over 75 in stock. 93 Mark III Conversion Vans as low as $15,988 or Conversion Pickups as low as $16,988. We're overstocked with over 400 vehicles ready to be sold immediately. Buy any new or used vehicle and receive an unbelievable four-day, three-night vacation at the Myrtle Beach Hilton. Vacation on us for a limited time at Cole Chevrolet Cadillac Geo in Bluefield. There's some good news on the horizon for families who rely on a variety of social services. These blueprints are the plans for what's tentatively being called the Mercer Community Services Center. The 73,000 square foot building is planned to house all kinds of social programs to help the needy in our area. It's definitely one-stop shopping for families and children in the area. But it's going to be unique, Kevin, in that we are bringing together health and social services, public and private agencies. Groundbreaking for the proposed center is expected sometime this summer. The location is being kept under wraps, but once it's underway, it will be hard to keep quiet. The facility will be about as half as big as the mall and will cost more than $5 million. For the first time in about a century, Pocahontas, Virginia is getting a new bank. Taswell National Bank is bringing in a full-service branch, including walk-in, drive-through, and automated services. The sleepy little town has lost several businesses over the years, so Mayor Anita Brown says residents are enthusiastic about the addition. At our meeting, the people, a uh, nice crowd came out and seemed very supportive of having a new bank and everything. And, you know, it means revenue for the town, and we're all for that. Yeah, yeah anytime we can get revenue, we're ready for it. <laughs> Bank president and CEO Ron Wheeling says although Pocahontas may not be commonly considered a good customer base, they think there's a lot of potential. They're waiting on final approval from federal regulators. The bank will employ three people when it opens, possibly by the end of May. Okay, and the days of football games and the senior prom fade away quickly when it comes time to think about entering that job market. In our continuing series, Job Quest, Jalita Albright examines what options teens have in getting ready to get a job. This is what's coming off the air. This is what's coming down in real. Today was Mary McNulty's first day on the job at radio station WHIS. The Graham High School senior is getting a taste of the workaday world as part of the mentor program. She'll put in 20 to 30 hours over the next four weeks, as will her four classmates who are doing mentorships at other sites. It's a chance to actually be there and learn and see for yourself instead of reading it. For me, it's always easier to be there and have hands-on than it is reading. It could go either way. It may not be what I expected, but I might still like it, of course. Or it could just totally turn me off, I guess, but I hope that doesn't happen. The teacher coordinating the mentoring program for the speech and drama students here at Graham High School says he believes there are two basic reasons that students are getting out of the classroom at the high school level and not waiting to be college interns. One, the business climate has changed and it's good to have free employees. And two, students have changed. They are ready at this stage. They have a level of maturity that students perhaps a decade or two ago did not have that I think makes them almost ideal employees because they're so eager to learn from the mentor. That's probably true as well for Stan Vanover, who's a straight-A student and student body president over 600 teens at the Tazewell County Votech School. Stan's navigated his future to include the Air Force. Uh, right now I'm trying to get into the air conditioning refrigeration section of the Air Force. And uh, in May, I will have completed my two-year course in air conditioning and refrigeration. And so, you know, it gives me a you know, bigger jump on a few other people. In Tazewell County, Jalita Albright, News Center 6. And tomorrow night, is there big business for small businesses in West Virginia? We'll have some answers. Well, stands up next, hopefully, with some answers about tomorrow's forecast. Could be pretty bleak out there, huh, Stan? <laughs> this time, folks, we're not projecting flurries or light snow, maybe. We're expecting a real McCoy, possibly the heaviest of the season. All about it next. New Center 6 weather is brought to you in part by Sudia Milk. It's what makes a body good. She likes milk and it shows. She's got great muscle tone. She likes milk and it shows. Strong, healthy bones. She likes milk and it shows. Baby soft skin. Milk does a body good with vitamin A to help keep skin smooth, calcium for strong bones, and protein to help build muscle. When you drink milk, it shows. She likes milk and it shows. It does a body good. I carry in my mind the picture of a child who was never born. 
a child I aborted, a picture that changes as the years go by. I imagine him growing tall with dark hair and eyes. Again and again, my mind returns to that ghost of a child who would have been 12 this spring. If you think abortion is an easy choice, that you can just forget about it, it's not true. You can't. It started out with a little note on the front porch. What would you do if a stranger was stalking your child? And I put a note in his mailbox and I says, now I know where you live. But he denies it, and the police are powerless to help. She's paranoid. I saw you with my own eyes. If you ever if you got near any of my grandchildren, I swear to God, I have you. How do you protect your child when the law can't? Next Sally. Tomorrow morning at 9. Today's financial summary is brought to you by Investment Planning Consultants Incorporated and Robert Thomas Securities. Cadillac, Cadillac Fleetwood. The quietest, roomiest, safest Fleetwood ever. Four inches longer for 93. And peace of mind with traction control, anti-lock brakes, and dual front seat airbags. Test drive a Cadillac Fleetwood with its new designs on traditional luxury. Cadillac. See your local Cadillac Gold Key dealers. Just one school change so far. They may change, though, after tomorrow. Uh, Tassel uh -huh. County Schools are going to be running one hour late tomorrow morning. And we've got some bad stuff in store for us <laughs> tomorrow. Wait till Friday morning and see Really this happens. serious? Yeah. Well, I mean, coming well, out it looks like be... And the National Weather Service is a says there's a possibility, not a certainty, of about four inches tomorrow night. You know? Wow. So mm -hmm. let's just let's just see what happens. We'll see how close they come. Of course, some places get a pile of the next place doesn't. Let's jump into it and see what you think after you see what the forecast is. First, we look at the Almanac. Went up to 26 degrees there at the Mercer County Airport today. Coming up from a low this morning of 14 degrees, 71 and 1 below. Uh, are the records that were on the right there, and they're kind of old. Sunrise tomorrow at 2 minutes past 7 o'clock in the morning. Sunset at 6.15 p.m. All right, as we wander out here, look at this. Where did the other two horses go? Where did you guys go? Huh? Boy, they really... I took a bath today. Uh, nice fella. <laughs> Easy, though. All right, let's see what's going on. Uh, let's take it. See, can we... We don't have that? <laughs> okay, there it is. 23 degrees, folks. The humidity, dry. 38% in the pressure. 30.12 inches of mercury rising. The winds just generally coming out of the northwest there, about 12 miles an hour. Gusting once in a while up there around 18. Then the precipitation, melted snow, five hundredths of an inch. Okay, are we ready? Well, let's roll in the temperatures. 25 degrees in Charleston, 22 in Oak Hill, 20 in Beckley, 25 in Princeton, 29 in the Mullins Pineville area, 31 in Welch, 23 in, in Tazewell, and another 31 over in Grundy. 33 is the warmest in Withville, 24 in Alderson, 19 in Lewisburg, 14 is the coldest. That's up on Droop Mountain, 30 over in Roanoke. All right, look at the high pressure coming at us from the back here now. That's not all it's coming, but look how clear the two Virginias. They're clear except for northern West Virginia where they have some snow in the last couple of hours, but high pressure is moving in. It's strong east of it, but it's kind of weak back here because there's a big storm system coming. Oh, <laughs> this octopus is heading our way, folks. Lots of snow action across the west here, and even the snow line getting clear down to Mississippi. Now, the snow, of course, around here in the last couple of hours is coming down to northern part of West Virginia, and it kind of spreads as it goes up around the Great Lakes. Now, tomorrow, <laughs> look at tomorrow, look at this. Gee, this whole storm system, low pressure systems here, pulling up moisture here from the Gulf, running into this colder air up here, and it looks like it's going to blanket us for a, quite a while. That whole thing will be shoving all the way through, folks. And then on Friday there, Friday evening, you'll still be some possibilities with the low pressure system sitting just east of us, another cold front just west of it. So it looks like we've got a good chance at it, folks. A lot of action there coming. Okay, tonight, mostly clear skies first until about midnight, then clouds will start moving in from the west. Low, expected 5 to 15, still cold there, variable winds. Then tomorrow, mostly cloudy, and then light snow by the afternoon there. High expected 30 to 35 degrees. South winds bringing up that moisture running into the cold air. See again? All right, tomorrow night, winter storm watch is possible. They're going to give this for tomorrow night because of possibly heavy snowfall amounts. Right. Low expected somewhere around 22 degrees. Oh, boy. All right, we're going to get it, it looks like. Uh, extended outlook shows, jump over to Friday there. 
Winter storm watch still in effect because light snow will be likely during the day on Friday. 32 for the high overnight lows, 15 right on through the rest of the period. Then Saturday flurries ending in the mornings, then some clearing in the afternoon, 32 for the high. Then Sunday, variable cloudiness and dry with a high around 35 degrees. Tomorrow night, as you see, would be a good night to sit around the fireplace at home. And I'm talking about your own home, too. Okay. Boy, I tell you, that snow doesn't look good at all. No, who's, it might be a little nasty. Sit in, Stan? <laughs> huh? Whose home would you sit in? <laughs> well, you could sit over in your girlfriend's home or travel somewhere else to some oh, other home. Oh, I, I see. So don't yeah. travel. No, don't travel. Got gotcha. you. Speaking of homes, though, Sherry's been uh, a little under the weather. And yes, she I, has. I'm hoping she'll be back on Friday. She's got... Strep throat. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, Amnesia. a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah everybody's... Involved, well, thank you, Stan. So. Mm -hmm. Coming up next in sports, West Virginia and Virginia Tech prepare to meet in Morgantown. And it's Concord's turn at the West Virginia Conference Tournament. Mark? Exactly right. Kevin, the Lions play the final game of the first round. We'll hear from Coach Steve Cox next in sports. Stay with us. Dodge Dakota Club Cab takes on all comers. With an available 230 horsepower Magnum V8, the new Ford Ranger doesn't offer a V8 engine. The new Toyota T100 doesn't either. Plus, Dakota has available four-wheel anti-lock brakes. This competition doesn't. And right now, you can get Dakota with up to 3222 in total savings. So see your nearest Dodge dealer today, because the original true midsize pickup is still the greatest. The Dodge Dakota Club Cab. Light, it is the first element of creation. Nothing brings it more elegantly or shapes it more beautifully than Anderson windows and patio doors. Come, live in the light of Anderson windows. Come home to Anderson. It's time for the last semifinal match in the Jeopardy Teen Tournament. It's Dog Eat Dog as teens fight it out with categories like... Going to the dogs. Now let's meet today's semifinalists. Nancy Dickman is considering a career in the media. Jesse Roach is thinking about a career in medicine. And Lev Ostrovich, well, he's thinking about becoming a medical researcher. Watch Lev, Jesse, and Nancy in the semifinals of the Jeopardy Teen Tournament. Tonight at 7.30. Tonight on NBC Nightly News, health concerns about a key member of the Clinton team, how they survived the mountain, the latest on the Colorado skiers and the dangers they faced. And six months after Hurricane Andrew, South Florida's broken promises tonight on NBC Nightly News. The real advantages of Duster from Chrysler Plymouth are its style and performance, and its show-stopping price, about 10000 making Duster one hot ticket. See your Chrysler Plymouth dealer, where real advantages make a real difference. Well, the spotlight is now off of the women's basketball <laughs> program, and time to, I guess, turn it over to the men. Shift it to the men's. You know, last night Bluefield State opened with a win. We'll recap that, but Concord gets its chance tonight. This is a team with about seven freshmen. They finished eighth this year. Look out in two years. How about that? The West Virginia Conference Men's Tournament continues at the Charleston Civic Center Coliseum today. The final game of the first round features eighth-seeded Concord College and ninth-seeded West Liberty. This is the first time in a few years that the 13 and 13 Mountain Lions haven't been among the favorites to win the tournament title. And head coach Steve Cox is not so sure he likes that. Well, you know, I'd always like to be first place and be the favorite is what I'd like to do, but I know that doesn't happen very often. We're just looking at the tournament as a chance to enhance our season. It's a great experience for our kids to come down here and get to play. And we're, you know, it's a cliche, but we're looking at it a game at a time. We always say if we can win just one game, you know, we'll be happy. To win that one game, Cox's Mount Lions have to beat a team that is similar to his. When you finish in the middle of the pack like we did, anywhere from like seventh down through tenth, you're going to play somebody almost exactly like you. Uh, very little difference between the teams. We're playing West Liberty. We had a tremendous game with them at our place during the regular season, 104 to 98. This means this one could be a shootout. Tip-off time is 9 o'clock. Now the winner faces regular season champion Salem Takeo in the next round tomorrow night. 
We'll have the highlights of this one tonight at 11. Last night, the four-seeded Bluefield State Big Blues opened the conference tournament by slapping West Virginia State all over the place, which leads one to wonder, why in the world is Terry Brown shaking his head right here? Can't figure it out. The Blues' Anthony Walton got the night started by swiping this pass and flushing it home. The Big Blues never trailed in this one. Kenny Sayre led Bluefield State with 17 points as BSC pounds State 97-59 to to advance to tomorrow's quarterfinals, where they will face fifth-seeded Alderson Broadus in action this afternoon. Kevin Wells, 25, Maurice Gandy, 23, as A.B. defeated Davis and Elkins by 10. Also this afternoon, six-seed Wheeling Jesuit a winner as they beat Fairmont State 92-76. to Okay, on paper, it certainly doesn't look like much, but tonight's West Virginia-Virginia Tech basketball game could be interesting. The Mountaineers, 12-10 and 10 on the season, need a win to secure at least a 500 season. Gail Catlett has had a string of 14 straight winning seasons, but with this game tonight, UMass on Saturday and Temple down the line, that run could be in jeopardy. Virginia Tech just plain needs a win. The 10 and 13 Hokies have lost three straight in six of their last seven games. This game also marks the return of Peterstown native Travis Jackson to the Mountain State. Tip-off in Morgantown is set for 7:30. Virginia Tech has lost the last two games in Morgantown, folks, by an average of 37 points. We'll have highlights of this one also tonight at 11. Meanwhile, the Virginia Cavaliers lost their second straight game in the ACC last night. Georgia Tech's little big man, Travis Best, led the Jackets past UVA 73-61. Virginia now 16-7 is back on the road at Wake Forest Saturday afternoon. Well, the weather has again wiped out a couple of high school basketball games around the area tonight. Princeton and Greenbrier East has been called off and rescheduled for tomorrow night in Princeton. That is weather permitting, of course. Also postponed Midland Trail and Oak Hill at the Fayette County Memorial Building. Two games we know will be played tonight. Oakville at Spanishburg and Braxton County versus Shady Spring at the Raleigh County Armory. By the look of the weather forecast, though, we may be wiped out with high school for the rest of the week. And sectional tournaments start next week, so we may have a backlog of games like on Monday night. Yeah, they'll so. be playing yeah. into the summer. <laughs> yeah, it looks that way. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Let's go to the newsroom now for a preview of what's shown on the late news. Tonight. And what are you working on tonight, Barrett? The state Supreme Court ruled today that county sheriffs are immune under state law for most actions they take in the official line of duty. Also, the West Virginia House of Delegates today considered a resolution urging the Peabody uh, Holding Company to return to the bargaining table with the UMW. Loretta, Kevin. Thanks, Barrett. And next up, a look at civil rights through the eyes of James Farmer. He's been campaigning for change since the 40s, and he's hoping for more progress in this decade. In 1992, we were number one in the region. In 93, we're out to shatter all records by offering, yes, even lower prices. Like this brand new Geo Metro with automatic transmission, 6571. New 93 Chevy Cavalier with power door lock, stereo cassette, anti lock brakes, only 8131. Check out a brand new rugged 93 Chevy S10 pickup at first team Ramey and Taswell, only 7691. Guaranteed lowest prices and gigantic selection keep us number one. Come deal with a winner, the team, first team Ramey and Taswell. If you're not entered in the Wheel of Fortune Red Letter Sweepstakes, you can't win. It's the biggest sweepstakes in wheel history with over 2,400 prizes. You could win one of nine GM MasterCards, each with $10,000 to spend. Or you could win one of 201 trips to the Caribbean on Norwegian Cruise Line. 600 selections from the Bulova Watch Collection. Over 1,500 Laguna Sportswear and Accessories Packages. There's over a million dollars in prizes. So, so watch wheel and win. Tonight at 7 on WGDA Television 6. So you have your husband on tape having sex with a stripper? I mean, my face, I could just feel it. It was bad enough that there was a stripper there, but they videotaped it. Can you trust a man who has sex with a stripper before he marries you? My husband would be hanging, and I'll let anyone here take the odds oh, yeah. on what appendage she'd be hanging by. <laughs> really, I just had this image of him hanging by that appendage. <laughs> Wives and their cheating grooms on the next Oprah. Tomorrow afternoon at 4, they're all around us. They're everywhere. Many of them have already landed in your neighborhood. They've endured adverse atmospheric conditions to get where they are today. Yes, Chevy's S10 travels through space at warp speed. Propelled by the biggest engine in its class. Now with $750 cash back, you can experience the S10 off-road adventure without NASA's budget. Discover one at a United Chevy dealer in your galaxy. 
Some classes at Concord College were canceled today so students could get a real education. And the teacher of this real education isn't even on the faculty, but perhaps copies of his speech should be required reading. Quietly and with grace, this man, old enough to be a grandfather to almost all of the student body, told his story of struggle, of the early years of America's civil rights movement. His goal today, to awaken, enlighten, and inform. Because very few Americans, white or black, know much about the contribution that blacks have made to American history or to world history. James Farmer helped write much of that history, at least as far as the American Civil Rights lesson is concerned. He founded the Congress on Racial Equality, worked and walked with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and long before it was popular, created a nonviolent way of pushing for civil rights. Now, more than 30 years after the Civil Rights Movement, he's pleased that today's young people are interested in yesterday's accomplishments. They want to learn about it. They have great difficulty in relating to it because they weren't born then during the Civil Rights Movement. Um, but when they hear about it, they uh, seek more understanding. Now blind, Farmer could not see the standing ovation the student body gave him. But for him, being blind is just one more way of being different, something he's grown accustomed to, something he says all of us should grow accustomed to. Being different simply means different and that we uh, talk in many languages, we look many different ways and have different colors and different kinds of hair, but we are all people, we are all Americans, we are all humans. Fascinating fellow got to, he did, he did not have a lot of time because after he spoke to the student body, he quickly met with us and then he spoke with the faculty for a, a private mm -hmm. gathering. But a fascinating fellow and the stories that he told and, and talked sure. to the kids about, uh, a lot of history there, real living history. Yeah, that's, that's definitely true. That's it for all of us here at New Center 6. We'll see you later at 11. Good night. You have been watching News Center 6, the region's most watched newscast. The up. president and the prime minister meet on aid to Bosnia. Well, we've had kind of an interesting weather <laughs> time this week, haven't we? What we were just now talking about is that Loretta has gotten rid of her, her braces today. Give us a dazzling smile without braces. I've had them on for two years and one month. A lot of viewers didn't know it. They were surprised when they see me. Yeah, I've had them on for two years and one month today. You know, it's so like a trouble on and a dazzling smile. Thanks, thanks. Keep right. on going. Keep on going. <laughs> It's cold out there, folks. Let's take a look and see what the weather proper the weather? looks like here. By the way, we look at the almanac here. It went up to 17. Now, boy, that is a cold, high Go temperature ahead. for the day. I'll tell you, the low this morning, yeah. 8 degrees. <laughs> oh, 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 boy. 70 Damn, I don't know how to get it in the store. Records for this particular uh, day, so we're not pushing anybody there in the record department. December the 30th, uh, sunrise tomorrow at 7.39 in the morning, sunset at 5.16 p.m. Oh, gee, I can't believe it. Tomorrow's New Year's Eve, right? Okay, this is a big, wide, sweeping area here. That's in Union, going down 219, coming south there. You just look out across there. Okay, all right, the library's just down the street there. It's, that's the scene all over the area. Let's go, let's see what's going on right now. 16 degrees, it's gone up since six o'clock. Well, it'll go back down again, don't worry. The humidity, 77%, that's up a little bit. 30.15 inches of mercury falling at the moment. Calm, the winds have calmed down, and when it does that, it usually drops, but we have some clouds up there to hold the heat in. All right, we ready? Heat, what heat is that? Yeah, I know. Okay, cold air coming, are you kidding? Mark, yeah, that's it, Mark air coming out. Cold air is here, it's been here. 15 degrees in Charleston, Oak Hill, Princeton, and in Tazewell, 13 in Beckley, 12 in the Pineville, Mullins, Welch area, uh, 16 over in Richlands, one of the warm spots, folks. Uh, 10 degrees in Withville, 9 degrees in Bland, and at the University Farm uh, in Monroe County, where you just saw, okay. 8 degrees is the coldest, that's in White Sulphur Springs. My hometown won the championship tonight. 19 is the warmest over in Roanoke, we just give that as a token. Here's the latest satellite picture. <laughs> That looks sparkly. Hey, I think it's great. Yeah, look at this nice, no braces here at all, see? <laughs> I think that's funny. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> I like that. All right, the high pressure is sitting just south, southeast of us, folks, near the center. News team, Loretta Bud, Eric Van, Stan Sweet's Weather, Woody Morgan Sports. This is News Center 6 tonight. A string of robberies in several counties may be cracked tonight with the arrest of three people by Bluefield Police. 
Good evening. Mercer County Sheriff's officials first spotted the suspect's car, a stolen vehicle around the Lorton Lick Road area around 7.15 tonight. They put all other law, local law agencies on alert shortly after. Then just after 8 tonight, the Rite Aid Pharmacy in Bluefield, Virginia was robbed. Two Bluefield, West Virginia police officers stopped the vehicle. The main suspect fled on foot up East River Mountain but was captured by police. This unidentified woman is also a suspect along with another man. But the main suspect is 29-year-old Donald Lee Coleman of the Oak Hill area. He's being interrogated right now about his possible role in other robberies recently. Police feel confident that Coleman may be responsible for several recent robberies in several counties in West Virginia and Virginia. We were afraid uh, should this continue someone might be hurt and uh, I think it was excellent police work and excellent cooperation between all the departments involved. The three suspects are being questioned right now. Bluefield Police, the Mercer County Sheriff's Department, and state police in West Virginia and Virginia work together tonight on that case. A truck heading to Mullins yesterday is still missing tonight. Police say it was carrying more than 700 cases of liquor. State police say a tractor trailer carrying the alcohol left nitro around 4 a.m. yesterday. It would have arrived at the Mullins Rite Aid by 8.30 yesterday morning. No one has heard from the truck's driver. Police searched the West Virginia Turnpike, have not found the driver nor the truck. The truck has a white trailer that says Kanaw Cartage on the side. Now here's Stan with a look at tonight's weather. How's it shaping up right now, Stan? Well, it d doesn't look bad out there. Temperature's dropping a little because we have clear skies and no winds, so it's dropping down a little colder than we had figured before. Let's take a look at the 18-hour uh, look here that we can call it. Clear and cold tonight. Oh, boy, that's a pretty good word for it. Low getting down to 18 to 26 for most of us and down in some of those sheltered valleys, down there around 10 to 15 degrees. Not at all. Partly sunny. You might see a little corner of the sun here and there uh, in the morning. And then in the afternoon, a chance of rain or freezing rain with a high expected 36 to 42 degrees. And you thought we'd seen enough snow? Oh, boy. Well, we have plenty more of that white stuff coming in the forecast that we'll have in just a few minutes. Okay, thanks, Dan. And coming up, search efforts continue for a group of people missing after an avalanche in Montana. The story and more when the news continues. Your best quality Ford dealer has an offer that's sure to make your holiday jolly. <laughs> His L's have assembled quite a savings on Ford Aerostar, up to $2,900. Ooh, money, money, money. Ooh, that's so big. Save up to $2,900 on Ford Aerostar with big cash back savings plus a double bonus discount on a preferred equipment package that includes these great features. And that's before your best holiday deal. But hurry, this offer ends soon. See your best quality Ford dealer today. The Family Value Store, Magic Mart. This is it, the sale you've been waiting for. Magic Mart's Red Tag Clearance Sale. Save 25 to 50% on fall and winter clothing and outerwear for the entire family. Ladies, men, boys, and girls clothing, now 25 to 50% off. Hurry in while the selection is at its best. The Family Value Store. Bought any durable goods lately? You know, stable investments that last five years or more. Okay, how about something for the garage? The Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra. Of all the Sierras purchased in the last eight years, 95% are still on the road. And Sierra Special Edition has airbag, anti-lock brakes, automatic and air for just $13,995. Or you could spend $5,000 more on a Taurus. It's your money. See your reliable Oldsmobile retailer today. It's been a day of giving and receiving as taxpayers try to get in their last chances for tax breaks. Reasons for giving are both altruistic and practical. A change in the tax law, a bullish stock market, and resurrected art prices have made it advantageous for donors to give big and then receive in the form of big tax breaks. The big change is in the way the IRS tallies donations of property that increased in value for the donor. Police are out in full force tonight hoping to nab drunk drivers. Here's more with Glenn Willie. As the clock strikes 12 tonight and 1993 officially gives way to the new year, you can bet there will be a few people who have had too much celebrating and a few too many drinks. Making sure those people find a safe way home without finding themselves behind the wheel of a vehicle is the hope of area law enforcement. Authorities say, unfortunately, New Year's Eve is one holiday in particular when people tend to make the wrong decisions about whether or not to drink and drive. But you can bet if you make that wrong decision tonight, someone in one of these will be close by. 
we were going to have more men working tonight than normal, and we're going to be in the areas where they have a lot of clubs, a lot of taverns, and uh, be on the watch out for drunk drivers. Authorities say using common sense when celebrating is the best way to avoid potential problems, and nothing can take the place of planning ahead. Well, what we encourage is, you know, the designated driver. If you're planning on going out and, and, and drinking and having a party and having a good time, then pick one out of the party that's not going to so that they can get you safely home. Getting plenty to eat and ending the alcohol part of your celebration early will also help in having a safe and happy new year. In Mercer County, Glen Willie, New Center 6. Alcohol isn't the only thing that makes the roads dangerous this time of year. Cold weather also brings its share of troubles. Here's Keith Wilson with some tips on wintertime travel. Car troubles can be compounded in the wintertime by freezing temperatures and snow-covered road conditions. Here are a few ways that you can protect yourself in case you become stuck on the roadside. Before getting into your car, AAA officials say, be sure to put a blanket, extra clothes, a flashlight, and perhaps a high-energy snack inside your car in case troubles arise. If you do become stuck, AAA officials say not to become panicked. The first thing you should do is turn on your hazard lights. Now, if you start to get cold or become hungry or need light, you'll know that you'll find all those things inside your vehicle. In advance, prepare for winter driving and have your, your uh, driving kit already prepared and, and in your car so that those things are easily accessible to you. If you do experience car troubles, check around the vehicle to make sure your car's exhaust pipe is not blocked by snow. If obstructed, the exhaust could enter back into your car and kill you. Laura Gooch says that you shouldn't leave your vehicle without some kind of identification. You can leave a note in the car, put a note in the window, you can uh, make tie uh, something that's visible to the car so that the traffic would know that the car is uh, is stalled and make sure that the car is locked. AAA says the majority of motorists are not prepared to face cold weather mechanical troubles but following these tips you could be ready. In Bluefield, Keith Wilson, News Center 6. When WVU takes on Florida tomorrow, one local fan will be watching it from the Superdome thanks to a longtime friend. Arnold Porterfield, who was disabled after a fall two years ago, left for New Orleans early this morning along with his friend Charlie Smith. Smith says the two have been going to games since they met in 1955, and the Bluefield pair says they aren't letting Porterfield's disability keep them from enjoying their number one pastime. You know, I just like, uh, I like to be in a game the crowd and, and they got good fans. West Virginia's got good fans, so we'll enjoy the game. So what's your prediction? Oh, uh, they can win. West Virginia can win, and I think they will. One West Virginia game a year, always, just about. So uh, we watched Zonka for Syracuse start his career, and uh, watched a lot of them develop. When Porterfield isn't watching WVU in person, he's watching tapes of the games in the Westwood Healthcare Center's activity room in Bluefield, Virginia. The Tonight Show, New Year's Eve, live from across America. Go live to Las Vegas for an exclusive inside peek at Barbara Streisand's concert event with Richard Simmons. Live from Times Square with Bill Maher. And live in L.A. with Michael McDonald, Kevin Meany, and Jay. Point the champagne cork away from the television show. The Tonight Show, live tonight. Who beats a Ramey deal? Nobody. First Team Ramey and Taswell announces their final sale of the year. Now through January 1st, it's the final sale of 1993. And we've saved the best for last. Shop discounts and rebates up to $6,000. And buy with no money down and no payments till spring of 94. The final sale of 93. The sale of sales. Lower payments, higher trade-in allowances, and the absolute lowest prices of the year. Going on now through January 1st. Come deal with a winner. The team, First Team Ramey and Taswell. You can take any car under two minutes. That's what I do. Take cars. Take a Slim Jim, open the door, pop the, the, the P-way on the, on the steering column, turn the switch, and we're gone. In most American cities, you can find some sort of gang activity going on each day after school. The Salvation Army program is for you, giving kids a fighting chance.
time to make your move to your Lincoln Mercury dealer's year-end move out. It doesn't matter how you get here, just get here. And get incredible year-end deals and low lease terms on every 94 Lincoln and every Mercury in stock. It's time to make your move for the deal you've been waiting for all year long. Because no one's going to offer you more for less. Now during the incredible year-end move out. So get to your Lincoln Mercury dealer any way you can. Because the big year-end move out moves out January 2nd. Don't miss it. The White House is trying to ratchet down expectations about a me Monday meeting on victims of radiation experiments. A senior White House official speaking anonymously says President Clinton is very concerned about the issue, but the official says Monday's session will be staff level only without cabinet rank officials or the president. The official says it's not a policy meeting. The interagency meeting with staff from the Departments of Energy, Defense and Veterans Affairs as well as NASA will begin efforts to gather documents on Cold War era experiments on humans. Some were done without the subject's knowledge or consent. A White House spokesman, Jeff Eller, says it's premature to talk about compensating the victims. He says first, officials have to find out just what happened. A search is underway for six snowmobilers caught in an avalanche in Montana. Two people were rescued after a couple of hours. The avalanche occurred on a ridge in the Swan Range east of Kalispell in the northwestern part of the state. A sheriff's dispatcher in Flathead County says a helicopter, ski patrols, and trained dogs have been sent to help in the search. The dispatcher didn't have any information on the condition of the people who were rescued. In Evansville, Indiana, a young girl has found an unusual way to get around in the snow using two pretty common things. Reporter Joe Terrell caught up with the young girl and her dog. Joe Terrell for NBC News. And coming up, a check on the rest of that forecast. Don't go away. So no big plans for New Year's Eve tonight, huh? Of course. I'm <laughs> supposed to be at a party tonight. Supposed but to the be. way I've got this cold and everything like that, I probably wouldn't go anyhow. Plus you had to work. Plus I had to work, yeah. <laughs> and it is a lot of work lately because we've had some really rough weather. Oh, yes. Uh, of course, at, like it in my hometown of White Sulphur Springs, they had a lot more snow than we had here. I that. We were in Beckley. They had tons. Beckley had quite a bit more, yeah. too, I noticed. Yeah. So we don't know. He's sitting down here in Bluefield. He said, well, it's just been cold. Mm -hmm. But, boy, they've had tons of them. And my, my wife says, well, you probably have a hard time getting parked because, uh, you know, these these uh, slush makers, these these yeah. uh, plows come by and whap and throw it all up on the sidewalk and everything like that. On top of your car. Yeah, on the side yeah. of your car. At least, stuff. though, they get through your roads, and that's the main that's, thing so you can get out. That's the main thing, yeah. You yeah. can't help it. you got to put it somewhere. Is 94 going to see any better weather than what we had at the end of 93? Oh, yes, there's going to be some really nice weather in 94, folks. It won't yeah. be right away, though, because <laughs> we're going to get started with snow. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> well, it won't be right away tomorrow, but I'll tell you about it in a few moments. Let's take a look at the almanac and show you the temperature spread now. Okay. Light snow showers likely with a high, 34, overnight low, 20. And then Tuesday, scattered snow showers coming back in there again, 32, 18 for the high low. New Orleans weather tomorrow. Are you ready? New Orleans weather? It's pretty nice in, indoors, of course. Where is the camera? Have we got a camera? All right, we don't have a camera. There it is. New Orleans weather tomorrow. Partly cloudy with a chance of showers in the afternoon. High somewhere around 62 degrees. Now, that's not bad. Of course, it's a little rough for them down there. They have thin blood, and it kind of upsets them a little. Yeah, but the weather won't matter much inside not, the big Not dome, inside so. the big dome. They won't have any problem they at all. They may get wet getting there, but yes. <laughs> the main thing is that the field will be nice and dry. And oh, ready for oh that's right. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks, Dan. And coming up in just a minute, we'll take a look at the Currents Classic highlights tonight. But first, here's a look at some scores from the top 25. <laughs> Well, Woody's making a resolution to feel a little bit better. He is very, very ill right now. I'm not kidding. And uh, I am going to be doing sports, so please bear with me. I did this several years ago, but I'm pretty rusty at it. Anyway, here we go. The nation's fourth-ranked NAIA squad went toe-to-toe -to -toe tonight with the Bluefield State Big Blues for the championship of the 1993 Lions Club Currents Basketball Tournament in Bluefield tonight. Bluefield State came in 4-3 and three against the conference's preseason coach's choice, Salem Takeo. Here Scott Meadows drains the jumper for the three to get the Blues started tonight. Then inside, it's Anthony Johnson, and Bluefield State leads 5-0. At the other end, though, watch as Aaron Harris takes the pass and gets the points. The Tigers continue to close the gap. Antoine Hatcher, a 6'10 sophomore, goes to the hoop and scores tonight. No final on this one yet, but Ohio Valley beat Bluefield College 102-93 for the consolation trophy. Well, the Virginia Tech Hokies proved to be the Big Ten and the rest of the nation that they are a team to be reckoned with today in Louisiana by blasting the Indiana Hoosiers. Let's pick it up at 
with Indiana up nothing, seven nothing rather, when Maurice DeShazo finds Dwayne Thomas with the 13-yard touchdown strike, tying the game at seven after the PAT. After Joe Swarm made it 14-7 on a six-yard run, Indiana made it 14-13. And then with 23 seconds left in the first half, Lawrence Lewis takes this fumble, return 20 yards for the score, 21-13 Virginia Tech. And then with one second left in the half, Antonio Banks took a blocked field goal attempt, 67 yards, to give the Hokies a commanding 28-13 lead at the half. There was no scoring in the third quarter, but in the fourth, first Antonio Freeman grabs this 43-yard scoring strike from DeShazo to make it 35-13 Virginia Tech. Touchdown Tommy Edwards added a five-yard score, and head coach Frank Beamer gets the Gatorade dump. He, of course, loves it. The final score tonight, today, rather, 45-20 Virginia Tech. Now the big day is finally here, almost here for Mountaineer fans, just a few more hours and bowl fans everywhere. Mark Brown has our New Year's Day bowl game preview. The New Year's Day bowling begins at 11 a.m. with the Hall of Fame Bowl in Tampa matching Michigan and North Carolina State. The Wolfpack made a habit of going to bowls, but winning them is a totally different story. NC State has lost its last two bowl appearances. At 1 o'clock, the action switches to the desert for Miami and Arizona in the Fiesta Bowl. For a change, Miami isn't playing for a share of the national title. Life hasn't exactly been a fiesta in Tempe for the Hurricanes anyway. The Hurricanes have lost their previous two fiesta trips. In Florida, Virginia meets Boston College in the CarQuest Bowl. The Cavs must find a way to slow down BC quarterback Glenn Foley. Then again, no one else has, so there's no reason to believe that the fading Cavaliers, losers of four of their last six, are about to do it. In Orlando, it's Tennessee and Penn State in the Citrus Bowl. This game will likely be the final one for volunteer quarterback Heath Schuler. He's expected to leave school for the big money of the NFL. In Pasadena, UCLA faces Wisconsin in the Rose Bowl. It's Wisconsin's first Rose appearance in 31 years. The Cotton Match is fourth-ranked Notre Dame and seventh-ranked Texas A&M. The Irish 10-1 beat the Aggies 28-3 in last year's Cotton Bowl. This year, Notre Dame claims the game will be a little closer. Don't buy that for a moment. New Year's night, it's the national championship game in the Orange Bowl, matching number one Nebraska, number two Florida State. The Cornhuskers may be 11-0, but they're also 17 and a half point underdogs to the high-powered Seminoles. I, I guess if, I, if we were 17 point underdogs and we were the number one team, I think I'd be a little mad too. And oh yeah, there is that one other game, the Sugar Bowl, as West Virginia faces Florida. The Mountaineers could possibly grab a share of the national title with a win over the Gators. Well, this is the final time. I've only answered this question 999,000 times. Uh, the national championship will take care of itself. If we win, we'll be in good shape. If we lose, we don't deserve anything. That's the way I feel about it. That's the bowl lineup. Now enjoy your New Year's Day. Mark Brown, New Center 6 Sports. I'll enjoy it when I'm done doing sports. And Woody, if you're watching, I hope you feel better. He really did just get ill moments before we were go to go into the sports cast. So I hope you feel better, Woody. We'll be back in just a moment recapping our top story plus a look at Friday Night Feedback. And now to recap our top story. Three people are in custody tonight after a, another robbery at the Bluefield Rite Aid in Bluefield, Virginia. Just after 8 tonight, the robbery took place. Two West Virginia, two Bluefield West Virginia police officers stopped the car. The main suspect fled on foot. This woman shown here is believed to be an accomplice in maybe one or more robberies. She is also accompanied by an unidentified man. The main suspect, though, is 29-year-old Donald Lee Coleman of the Elk Hill area, and he's being interrogated right now. Police are trying to find out if he's involved with any more robberies in the area. There have been countless robberies in our area over the past several months, and uh, we should have more in the story for you, of course, on the weekend report tomorrow. Now, we'll close out the year with one last word from some of our viewers. Here's Friday Night Feedback. If there's one thing in this world that drives you nuts, makes you crazy, ticks you off, what is it? Well, I guess it'd be these people out here. Since the pricing <laughs> across the state of America. Well, that's the news. Thanks for bearing with us tonight, and uh, have a good New Year. That's it from all of us. Good night. Live from the NBC studios in Burbank, California, GM Grand Hotel in Los Angeles.